Thank you, Lord. this morning, getting ready to worship the Lord, we worship Him all the time, that's what we do, pray for the uh, Glenn family, because Sarah Glenn went home to be with the Lord, and yeah, she, she was, uh, she was ready. She was ready, and, and uh, the family is very pleased that, that she's with the Lord because she was struggling for quite a while. So anyway, Lord, we just thank you so much this morning. Just bless this time, this worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when they found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Your, be your name when the sun's shining down on me when the world's all as it should be but blessed be your name blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering though there's pain in the offering blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name. Of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be your name. We worship you, Lord. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses, and He walks with me and He 
talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever They're singing And the melody That he gave to me Within my heart Is ringing And he walks with me And he talks with me And he tells me I am his own And the joy we share As we tarry there None other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him Through the night be round me be falling but he bid me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. eyes on the sparrow your hand it comforts me from the ends of the earth to the depths of my heart let your mercy and strength be seen you call me to your purpose as angels understand for your glory may you draw all men as your love and grace demand and i will run to you to your words of truth but not by might not by power but by the spirit of god Yes, I will run the race till I see your faith. Oh, let me live in the glory of your grace. Your eye is on the sparrow. Your hand, it comforts me. From the ends of the earth to the depths of my heart, let your mercy and strength be seen. You call me to your purpose 
as angels understand for your glory may you draw all men as your love and grace demand and I will run to you to your words of truth not by might not by power but by the Spirit of God yes I will run the race till I see Face. Oh, let me live in the glory of your grace. And I will run to you, to your words of truth. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Oh, let me run the race Till I see your faith Oh, let me live in the glory Oh, let me live in the glory Oh, let me live in the glory of your grace Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of the Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, you can move the mountain, my God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. He has conquered the grave. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures, and fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender Savior, He can move the mountains My God is mighty to save He is mighty to save forever Author of salvation He rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave Shine your light and let the whole world see We're singing for the glory of the risen King Jesus Shine your light and let the whole world see We're singing for the glory of the risen King Savior, He can move the mountain My God is mighty to save He is mighty to save forever Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, he can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior. Amen, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Do 
Diana Mia. Pray for Diana Mia. She's sick. Oh, John's mom. Okay. Diana Mia. We're going to keep her in our prayers. And my son, Grayson, also. Yes. Hi, Grayson. Hi, Grayson. <laughs> it was, we had troubles this morning getting out of the house, you know. He, yeah, he saw Daddy put on his church shirt, you know. When you put on the button down, it's time to go to, it's time to, go to church. And he knew it. That's all it took. So I went out to the car, and I had forgot my sunglasses, so I came back in. And he's already sitting down at the computer watching so he can see. Yeah, so, yeah, he wanted to, wanted to see church. He loves it here. But uh, welcome to Greater Grace, everyone. Um, it's a blessing and an honor to be a, a part of this church. Um, everybody here um, should, be, should be honored that they're involved in this church because it's an amazing place here. Um, brought to you by our Pastor Jeff who teaches what's in the book. And he's a teacher, so he studies for the week, gets the message, and he brings it to us so we can learn together. Um, and uh, it's a blessing to be, be able to consume what he, what he um, and he learns every time you read, right, Pastor? Every time you get in, you learn something new, <laughs> never ending. And he brings it to us, which is, which is a blessing for me and all of us. Um, Wednesday night, we, these are the announcements, so I'm not going to go on too long because uh, I get in trouble. So Wednesday night... Um, we have service here at 7 o'clock, if you're listening online or anybody here doesn't know. Um, 7 o'clock, we have a, a service here. Um, Saturday mornings, 10 o'clock, 10.30, something like that, 10, 10.30, um, we do outreach. Um, and so if you're interested in that, um, you show up here at 10, 10.30, we go out into the streets and, and spread the light of, the, uh, of Jesus Christ out to uh, who doesn't need it, right? Yeah, so um, you're welcome to join us with that. A whole bunch of us go out. Um, me, not one. I, I say a whole bunch of us, like I, I go, because you know what? I've never done it, but I need to do that, Pastor. I need to show up a Saturday and go, you know what? I, you know, I need to do that. That way I can say a bunch of us as, you know, like me doing it, because, uh, and Grayson would love it. Oh, yeah, Grayson would have a ball, for sure. So, um, but, but we all, uh, throughout the week, um, you know, we spread the light to the world, people at work, people at your, your neighbor. You know, we're always, I mean, if you're in Christ, which we all are, we're, we're always out there spreading the light in, in, uh, of, of God and Jesus and, and what he's done for us. So uh, that's never ending. After uh, Sunday, on, uh, we have service at 1030. Everybody, we had a bunch of people here 10 o'clock today, just fellowshipping, and it was awesome. So if you can come in a little early in fellowship, it's always great to catch up on things during the week. And if you haven't caught up on things during the week, I have an opportunity for you to do that. We have a... Susie looks at me like, what is he talking about? Yeah. I didn't tell him anything. She, she's the one, her and Pastor get all together and get everything. So she's, she's looking at me now like, what is he going to say? We have a super chat in the text messages. Um... And if anybody wants to be involved with that, just talk to Joe or Susie or one of us who's involved, and we'll include you in it. I've been blessed all week long by how everybody involved in that is thinking of the Lord every day. I mean, I must get 100 texts a day. My boss likes him, man, what do you got going on? I'm like, it's just a super chat. You know, we're talking about God and stuff, and he's a Christian. He says, well, how can I be involved? I said, well, heck, I'll get you, I'll get you hooked up right in that. So if you want to do that, just add your phone number. Um, it's, it's really a blessing for me. I mean, I'm driving down the road, so half the time I want to stop and read, but I can't do that until I stop. But if you want to do that, that's great. I think we got like 16 people or something now in it. I mean, it's awesome. It's, it's, what do you want? Nobody can see you. You're on it, but you're invisible. That would only come from silver. That, that's just the, just the way it is. You know, we're going to work on that today, though, for sure, I promise. Okay. How do you get on it? We'll, we'll talk to after service. I don't want to take up pastor's message. I know it's a good one, so we're going we're gonna to move on. But before I do that, I was talking to a guy at, at work this week. 
um, and we were talking about the Genesis, book of Genesis, because, you know, he's not a Christian, but he's curious, right? And when you know they're curious when they come up and you ask you about something. And so he says, Tim, do you, you, you really believe all that stuff in the book of Genesis? Like literally, like, like you know, he, he made everything that you see in seven days? I looked at him and I kind of laughed and I went, I don't believe that, seven days. He did it in six. And the seventh day he stood back and rested. Yeah, he didn't do it in seven days. He did it in six days, right? Literally. And he looked at me like, man, I thought you were smarter than that. I'm like, man, you have no idea what the Bible has to offer, right? That was a good one. Susie, I got laughs out of that one, okay? But that was, that was real. I was like, no, not, not seven days, six days. Did it in six. Seventh day, he sat back and went, ah, this is good. This is good. Yeah. So it's amazing. Ah, I love God. So it's so good to be involved with, with him and reading his word and just talking to people. And it's, it's amazing. So you're at the right place if you're here. I promise you. We got a great pastor. We got a great bunch of people here. So it's awesome. We're going to do the offering now. So let's pray for the offering. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for all of the simple blessings that you give us each and every day, things that we don't deserve, Lord. You give it to us, regardless of the situation. You're always there for us, and we, we thank you for that, God. Lord, take this offering that we have here today and use it for your good, for the kingdom, God. We thank you for the, for the jobs that you've given us and the ability that we have to make money at our jobs or whatever it may be. Lord, now we just want to be able to give back to you just a, a small portion of what you've given to us each and every day. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, just have a quick request. <clears throat> we have a lady in the church. She's been in the church for 30 some odd years. She's from Europe. She's coming into the United States and is looking for a place to stay here in West Palm for three weeks. So if you know of anyone or have a place, please let me know after church. Thanks. When the storm clouds roll over me when I'm seized by uncertainty When the odds are too great When I bend from the weight I believe, I believe, I believe When the night falls and darkness closes in When the voice of doubt comes creeping in my eyes start to hurt when I can't be too sure. I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe in the way that you have set me free. I believe in the truth of what you've said to me. I believe in the light that you have given me. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. When the waves of fear come crashing down, when it's hard to hear over their sound, though my voice may shake, though the ground may quake, I believe, I believe. I believe in the way that you have set me free. I believe in the truth of what you've said to me. I believe in the life that you have given me. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. When the 
trumpet calls <laughs> when we hear the voice that spoke the word every fear and doubt will be cast to the ground and the feet of our king let all creation sing i believe in the way that you have set me free i believe in the truth of what you said to me i believe in the life that you have given me oh i believe i believe i believe I believe, I believe, I believe. Hallelujah to our King. good, isn't it? It's worth it, isn't it? It's worth it. You know, in Jeremiah 23, 4, it says, and I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be, saith the Lord. Lord, bless this word to us today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, God has order, and in his order, there's a covering. There's a covering. If you think about, he sets up pastors over his flock. It's his flock, but he puts p pastors there. And the, and the power, and the, and the uh, pastor is kind of like a tower, right? He sees over the horizon. He sees the field. You notice the, sh the sheep are, are a little lower in, in their perception, so he uses a, a pastor to kind of sound the alarm. You ever notice that? So the guys that are in the tower, he sees a little bit more in that area. He doesn't really see more, but he, he, God gives him more perception on, to spread to the sheep. And he directs the path of what the message would be. It's, it's amazing how he does that. He sits, he's the tower. Dismayed, he says, they will fear no more, nor be dismayed, which means beat down. They won't be beat down. You know, think about in Genesis 13, 10. You had Abraham and you had Lot. See, Lot, Abraham was believe God, he trusts God. Lot was just along for the ride, basically. Right? And so he, when the division happened in that, he says he lifted. Lot lifted up his eyes to the plain of Jordan. He lifted up his eyes. See, we're to not only God lifts up our perception, and then we can see further. We can see the oh, and we get into the word. We dig into the word. Be dismayed, and he won't let us down. He's going to give us a message today. Each one of us individually, individually, personal, and corporately. It's a corporate message. Each one of us is receiving something a little different than the other. The portion that we need because of the capacity that we have. Some people have a larger capacity. 
And some people have a smaller capacity. But if our, if our uh, hearts are open, he will fill it to the brim. Mm -hmm. Overflowing. In 1 John 4, 18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love. Perfect, that's complete, full love. Agape love. Cast out fear. Because fear has torment. And he that feareth is not made perfect in love. He's lacking. People that fear anxiety, there's all kinds of different kind of fears. We fear, we think about, oh, well, I'm not going to pay this. I'm going to do, you know, I'm not going to make it. Oh, I'm going to lose my job. Torment. It's trusting, trusting God, trusting God, cast out that fear. You know, keep your, keep your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. I had a testimony. Leon heard the testimony up in, up in Fort Pierce the other day. We were in, uh, Sarah was, was passing, and, and we're in the room, and uh, we had uh, two of Pastor Moses' sons there. These guys are, can sing. I mean, these guys can sing. And uh, Sarah's daughters, uh, Allison and Amanda, they can sing too. Yes. And I'm there, and I'm thinking, man, I can't sing like that. <laughs> but we broke out into some hymns. And I'm telling you, the anointing was like you could, you, you know, would carry you. Yeah. It would, people were weeping in the hallway, I heard. They were in the hallway weeping when we were singing. We sang maybe, I don't know, five or six hymns all the way through. And it was like and God gave us the, the words, the melody, and it just flew. And so it's like that we worship the Lord in that. And, um, and it was just reaching out to people that we don't even know. What a time it was. I was so blessed, and and then and they were t talking about it up up there in Fort Pierce, and they were weeping then. So it was, uh, I was so blessed to be a part of that. And just like us, when we're worshiping the Lord, it's something. It's different. Uh, people don't hear us outside this place, but when we were worshiping there, they heard us. So the people that fear are lacking. That's people that aren't trusting are lacking. And in Jeremiah 23, 1, it says, Woe unto the pastors that don't teach. It says that, that uh, destroy and scatter the, the sheep of my sheep, saith the Lord. So it's a very responsibility to teach the whole counsel of God, the finished work. So woe to the pastors that don't teach the finished work. Total security, eternal security. Secure, we can't have nothing, to, we have nothing to do with our salvation except accept it. In, in 1 John 4, 17, going back a, a, a verse, it says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? In the day of judgment, I'm not going to be backing in. I'm going to have boldness when my love is that way. I, I got the perfect love, of, not my love, the perfect love of Christ. Because he first loved me, and I got to learn that love. When I learn that love, then my confidence comes. Because it's no longer me. It's all him. It says, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Isn't that amazing? We are him in this world. So we can be bold. We can't stand. We can sing psalms, psalms in, in the street even. I sing all the time. To, I, I got a song I sing called Only Believe. I sing it to people. It's simple. You know, you just say, can I sing you a song? And they're going, this guy, I better sing it because he might kill me. <laughs> you know, I better let him, right? <laughs> But that, that's it. You know, they see that, the boldness in the day of judgment. We have boldness before God. Why can't we have boldness before man? 
but it's worth it. It's worth it to be bold. You know, in Galatians 2.20, it says, I am crucified with Christ. Never, you know, ne nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life that I now live, I live by faith, his faith, my faith, our faith, in the Son of God who loved me, gave himself for me. So I can, if it's no longer me, it's him. Like it says in 1 John 4, 17. So in this world, we're him in this world. We're the closest thing that people will come to Christ. Now. Some people. In Colossians 2, 10, it says, you are complete in him right now, which is the head of all principalities and powers. So we don't have to wait for something to be complete. We're already complete because he says we're complete. So in Titus 3, 5, it says, it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. It's according to his mercy, his compassion, his tender mercies. Merciful. And we know that we can go boldly there. If we think that we have anything to do with our salvation, then we shouldn't be afraid. We should. You, you, I've run into Christians before that think, well, they could lose their salvation. I've heard them even preach that. I used to do uh, uh, concerts, Kathleen can tell you that, where that there were different uh, doctrines. And a guy before me went up and he was a, you know, it was a concert. And he was talking about if you get drunk tonight and you die and, and, and you'll go to hell. So you got to get fresh saved every day, basically. And I, and so I had to get up right up next to him. So I had to tell people that this guy was totally off. See, the guy, you can't unsave yourself. No matter what in hell, you cannot save, unsave yourself. Once saved, always saved because he's saved. And that's how it does. Not I saved because that, that brings that yoke back on me. And I can't do it. I have nothing to do with my, my salvation except accept it. So we should be afraid if that be the case. And our love is not made perfect. I want to have that perfect love. In Isaiah 118, it says, Come now, let us reason together. And that's how we learn about Christ. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Because he made them that way. We cannot do it. We can't take the stain out. Though they be like chrisman, they shall be like as wool. You know, it's always come. You know, in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, he says his thoughts are higher. His ways are higher. Ours are dirt. When we even get into the thinking in the natural, we have to think, bring thoughts in captivity. Think with him. In Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you also in Christ Jesus. How? How can we do that? We must come and learn in Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. That's all he has. He says, learn of me. Learn of me. And that's what he says. Your sins are, though they be as, they shall be white as snow. Once you learn that, it's his righteousness, not ours. It's imputed righteousness. It's given. It's not earned. In Hebrews 4.16, is that let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace to receive mercy. That we may obtain mercy and find grace and, and help to help in time of needs. We find that at that throne. Because we come to him immediately. You know, I, I think of the prodigal son, we talk about that a lot. Because it's us. In different stages you know God lets us go as far as we want to go right he lets us go and and you know sometimes we try to help people that are going they're still going they haven't come to the end of themselves yet right but when when he comes to the end of himself he thought that he would work for his father he was ready to change 
when he came to that end of himself, he was ready to change. And the father let him go until he learned that he needed that change. And then when he turned and he, he repented totally in his heart, he was willing to do whatever it took just to be a servant for his dad. Some people don't want that. They want to be enabled and, and, and taken care of. But no, you just turn. Be willing to work. But he's not going to put that yoke on you. He's not. You know, I'm going to go back. He really totally didn't know him. And some don't. Some people don't really know him that way. Even the prodigal son didn't. Even the prodigal son's brother didn't. But the father did. So you let that mind be in you. That finished work mind of grace, mercy, that we can come boldly for it. Seven times seven in a day. See, for the more that we know him, the more that we know our value. We have value. Not only do we have value, people have value. In Colossians 3, 1, it says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Like we say, Galatians 2.20. We're crucified. We're dead. We reckon ourselves that way. See, that's why people can never overcome because they're still living in the past. Well, why am I this way? Because this happened a long time ago. And they carry something that happened a long time ago for 20 years and they don't reckon themselves dead to that. It's like, oh, the poor guy. Yeah, I, really, the poor guy. He needs to reckon that dead and say it is new. His mercies are new every day. Bad things happen to some good people. Bad things happen to us. I can get depressed. I get up in the morning sometimes and I'm like, but this morning I came in and people says, what's wrong with you? <laughs> right? right? I don't know. <laughs> then there was two of them. Then somebody says, what's the matter? <laughs> I don't know. But see, we come in with that, sometimes with that burden, we got to give that burden up. It's a daily thing. But people with their burden, they keep telling people about their burden. Come unto me that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. They never give it up. It's a crutch. We got to give that up, whatever it might be. Every day, sometimes, we got to give it up. We say, no, I'm new. Christ has taken that. And part of the, the burdens and the valleys that went through, they're, they're part of the, all the, whoso, the whatever things that happen. All things work together for our good. So maybe it might take us 25 years to finally lay that burden down. Because some people carry it. And God's saying, okay, come on, lay it down, lay it down here. I'll take it. Take this yoke. It's easier because I'm carrying it and you on it. I think that's a yoke. It's like his yoke is here and we're on top of it. And he's carrying ever, everything. And he does. He's just, we're just along for the ride. And it says, it's like hide and seek, right? So don't live in the past. When Christ, who is our life, verse 4, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. And I think that, that in, uh, in practice today, that's true too. When he appears to us, when we see him, then we, the glory of him shines through us to others. When we let that stuff go. You know, say for instance, we have a burden that we have and then we're, put, we're putting it on other people they put it on so we'll, you know and then said so just let's just give it to jesus because you then the people start trying to carry that burden too people bring the burden to me and i'm like 
I, I don't, I don't want to carry that. To, you know, I understand it. But, you know, let's give it to Jesus. When he shall appear, we shall also appear with him. Like as he is, so are we, right? First John 4, 17. Because as he is, so are we today. So when we see that, when we operate in that, in his love, then it, so, it shows. In Matthew 6.33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You know, in his righteousness, you can say his justification. That's what justifies us, is his righteousness. Because there's nothing that there's nothing can go against his righteousness. It's total righteousness beyond what we even ever. We're not righteous, none righteous. Just him, his righteousness. He gives that to us. It's a gift. Justification. Seek ye first and you see when is first. First is now. First is always right now. Every thought in captivity. You know, every thought. Acknowledge him in all your ways and not in your own thoughts. Acknowledge him. He directs your path. I know sometimes that's hard to be thinking like that all the time. But like you say, the, the thing for, that he was talking about, bringing up scripture to one another all the time, and just loving one another. And being who you are, you know, you're, you're you know, I'm not like the, like the most fuzzy guy in the world. You know, I say stuff sometimes that I don't want to, I have to. You know, and maybe sometimes I might be wrong. I think I'm right, though. But then the God will teach me, and he will direct me. He will pull me in. He'll pull you in, too. But we're dead. And if we're dead, we can't be offended. Right? Go kick a dead man. You know, he ain't there. He's someplace else. But seek ye first, and first is now. First is right now. In Matthew 4, 23, the A part, it says, And Jesus went about all the Galilee teaching. He did it in their synagogues, preaching the gospel. The gospel, the good news of redemption, salvation of the kingdom. You know, in Luke 19, 10, Jesus came. His whole purpose was to seek and save the lost. Can you imagine that? The King of kings, the Lord of lords. The Alpha, the Omega, came to seek lost. And you think, was it worth it? Was it worth it? That's how wicked as the world is today. Think about how wicked the world is. No, don't think about it. It's all around us. People are lost in, that, in the world. They're all lost. There's so many lost. In Matthew 11, 5, is the, the blind receive the sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, you know, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. What, you know, amazing. Things happen. Things happen when we, when we're, when we live for Christ, when we understand who we are and the value that we have and the value that the people we speak to have. It's great value, great value. The gospel of the kingdom. You know, Jesus speaking in Matthew 13, verse 44, it says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure in a field. And when a man hath found, he, ha he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth the field. The kingdom of heaven. I know I've heard this, these scriptures preached in a lot of different ways. But if you can align it with the Lord, the kingdom of heaven is he, he's seeking something. He's seeking something. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking godly pearls. Who, when he found one pearl of great price, he went and sold 
all that he had and bought it. One pearl. One pearl. Great value, huh? And again, the kingdom was like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. That's like the whosoever will, isn't it? Value. The kingdom of heaven is God creates great value in souls. And you think, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Are we worth it? God says it's worth it. God says you're worth it. God says people out there that are lost, that he's seeking, are worth it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom of God. And he says in, in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, he says, learn of me. The learn of me is, is that we know his thoughts and his mind. That's how we get his mind is we learn of him. And then we, not my thoughts, you know, but his thoughts. Not my ways, but his ways. Not my intellect, but his which is higher than man's. The wisdom of the world is like, a, they're bozos next to the Lord. They don't understand it. They're going further and further away. Further and further away. It's like six days. Yeah, God, he can do everything. I mean, if he knows every thought that everybody has right now. I know some of you guys start better stop thinking. <laughs> no, but think about it. He knows every hair on all our hair. He knows what our last thought will be, our first thought. In our six days, is, that's nothing. He could have done it in one. But there's, there's a reason he did it in six. So those other people could question it. <laughs> <laughs> and, Tim, and Tim could have the answer, right? <laughs> and we keep finding these things out. In 1 Peter 3, 4, it says, But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. We're thinking of that. Great price. We have that heart. Like David had the heart after, after God. He had the heart after God. He was a sinner. He was a great sinner, just like us. But he had a heart. And that's what God is interested in. In the sight of God, it's great. In Matthew 24, 14, it says, and the, and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. We were talking about the end come. We think it's coming soon. And it would be great. It would be awesome. And uh, and sometimes we get discouraged with it happened. It hasn't happened yet, but we've got to trust God in it. There's still some pearls out there that we need to find, that he's going to use us to find. And we go and we, and we seek them. But the gospel, you know, what is the gospel? What is the good news? Well, in, in Mark 1.1, 1, 1 it says, the beginning of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's the gospel. Jesus Christ, the Word. The beginning was Word, John 1, 1. And the Word wasn't God, and the Word was God. That's the gospel. The gospel is all there. It's Him speaking to us. In John three sixteen. God says, one soul is worth it. God so loved the world, you can put your name in there, that He gave His only begotten Son. He gave everything for us. How amazing is that? How amazing it is that God created us, but he didn't create us. He gave us free volition. He created us. He wants us to love him. It's amazing. He wants us to love him. Then he gives us all opportunities to do it. And what pleases him is faith. It's hearing him. In Hebrews eleven six. he wants us to hear him. 
He wants us to listen to him. He wants us to know him. He wants us to be intimate with him. You know, the, the story, you know, this book is his history. This is the true, most accurate history book there ever was. It's the only history book, really, because it's his story. Because everything else is going to be wiped away. So you can take all the history books, which is mostly lies, because whoever the conqueror or, uh, of, the, of the wars and stuff is the one that writes that book. You know, the other guys are the bad guys, even if they was the good guy, right? I don't think there's any good guys involved in that stuff, but, you know, people die. But it's history. It's his story, and his story is our story because we're him. As he is, so are we. His story is, is uh, Sarah Glenn's story, right? It's Mary's story. Remember Mary? Oh, man. It's uh, Pastor Stevens and Pastor Foster. It's Joe's story. It's Joe. It's George's story. Remember jo George? We had him for a short time. The Coke story. You know, it's Tony's story. It's Dale's story. It's Hector's story. Some of those stories are pretty rough. Some of them aren't. You know what I mean? And some people don't tell their story because... They, they, they left it go. It's gone. But God delivers us through these stories. It's uh, Tim's story. It's Grace and Mercy's story. Grace and what a great story. You know, it's like that. It's Christina's story. We got, that's my story. That's who we are. It's worth it. The redemption, the grace, the mercy story is us. Redemption. The kingdom is about souls. It's about people. It's about the lost. It's about the scattered. It's about the confused. It's about the hurting. It's about the fearful. People living in fear. I see them walking around with masks. You know, I want to go to them and say, you know, why are you wearing a mask? You know, why are you wearing a mask? You going to rob the place? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's it. But they're, they're out there. There's the weak. It's about the weak. It's about the poor. That's what, that's what it's about. That's what the gospel is about. And they're worth it. That's what God says. They're worth it. We're worth it. Serving God is worth it. Coming to church on Sunday is worth it. Having a word in season for somebody is worth it. Receiving from a word from somebody is worth it. Hearing the word of God is worth it. And he died and he took up our cross, right? And he said, it's worth it. Mm. And when we die, that's when the spirit takes over. Can't, you know, we can't. It's that's the war against the flesh and the spirit. It's always going on. That's why Paul said, you know, I fought the fight. I have completed my course. We haven't completed our yet, but we're still fighting. You know, and he kept the faith. God wants us to keep the faith. Keep in touch. Keep with him. Keep hearing the word. Keep studying the word. Keep the word. Keep the faith. And when we do that, it's worth it. It's worth it. It opens up other avenues and other thoughts. In the gospel, it's the word of life. It's the word of life. People are dying. People are lost. Jesus is the word in the beginning in John 1.1. 1, 1. He was the word from the beginning. The word will always stand. You know, how can this book be so uh, 
current, yet it's old, and yet it's the future. It's eternal. And people try to defy it. They, they try to uh, uh, make their own Jesus, make what they think Jesus is. Because it is written. He said it is written, not was written, going to be written. It is written, and what it says is what it says. We don't have to, well, we exegete it. I do that. I look at the, the, the Hebrew and the Greek words, whatever. I can't pronounce any of them. But, but in, in what they, the meaning is, and in, in the meaning, believe it or not, is what it says in the King James. Really? So, well, well it means that it means what it says in the in in that book. You don't have to go and and do that. I mean, kind of it's kind of fancy to do it, you know. But it says what it says. See, if if the Lord wanted to make it complicated, we'd never understand it. Never understand it. But he he came. He comes to our level and our capacity. I remember the first time I heard, uh, heard Pastor Stevens. I said, "This guy is way over my head." But I got something out of it, right? I got something. There was something for me in there. And it's the way it is. If we listen, there's something there personal for us all the time. And then we keep listening, and then it just keeps opening up, and my capacity expands. So I'm decreasing, and he's increasing. It's amazing, isn't it? He's increasing, I'm decreasing. You know, we speak these words because they are worth it. In 2 Corinthians 3, 3, 3, it says, we are declared to be the living epistle, an extension of the Bible. That's what it means. We're an extension of the Bible. We're actually walking around because we are as he is in this present world. I don't feel like it. Like, the, what's wrong with you today? There's two of, I don't know, what is wrong with me today? Well, I need, to, I need to get in the Word, and I need to hear the Word to be lifted up. That's what I need. In John six sixty three, it says, It is the Spirit that quickeneth, and the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. You know, when Jesus was speaking this in John 6, Many would not follow him anymore. They didn't understand it. He tried to break it down to their level, but many follow him no more. When they see that the only way is through the word of God. That's the only direction through this life is the word of God. Because if we didn't have the word of God and, and he didn't bring it to us, what would we have? What would we have? We would be like, like the lost. We would be, have our own ideas, and we'd be programmed by the prince and the power of the air, right? TV, whatever, some professor that has some, uh, you know, intellectual exercise for us to do to make us better. Repair Adam books. We've got a Repair Adam book out here. Repair Adam. i, I got a Repair Adam book crucifying. <laughs> That's the end of that tune. And that's what that's that's where the the burden comes is fixing Adam, pampering Adam, helping Adam. No, crucify Adam, and just keep going forward. Say no, Christ, I'm following Him. That's who I that's who I am. And that's what I do. In Matthew four four it says, "But He answered and said, It is written." You notice that I love that Jesus. It is written, not was written was written a long time ago. It is written. I am written. You are written. He is written. He is the writer. He's the author and the finisher. You know, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's also in Luke 4.4. 4. In Acts 5.20 it says, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of life. You know, uh, because they are worth it. They are worth it. People are worth it. We speak the words of life because they're worth it. And he says, stand. We you know Christians don't stand anymore. 
a lot of Christians don't stand, supposed Christians. They fear the war. You know, they have that fear. They're not, they, they're lacking. If you have fear, you're lacking. But we're complete. And we're him. He said, because they're worth it. Go and stand, speak <clears throat> to the people, all kinds of life. They're not worthy. I'm not worthy to speak it either. Not worthy. They're not deserving. But they're worth it. It's amazing, isn't it? Man, they're not, they're not, they're worth it. See, we have this value. And to God, it's great value. Like John 3, 16, we see it. God so loved whoever it is. And you see the people at the football games and stuff, which I don't watch anymore because they're woke. But still, there's people that go because they still on TV and they put the sign up. I don't even know if they let them do that anymore. They used to do it, right? John 3, they still do it? John 3, 16? Some people actually, uh, Tim Tebow, he put it on under his, under his eyes. And then they, they hated it. They hated the guy because he stood. See, so don't be afraid if people hate you when you stand. It's an honor. Despise the shame. Right? Like Jesus did. They have great value, even if they're hating you. It's just like uh, Stephen when he's me and stone. He says, Lord, he, he preached. It was dangerous to preach back then in Acts. Lay not this sin to their charge because they have great value. They have great value. And they heard it and it's recorded. I don't know if I can do that or not. I won't take up stones and throw them back at them or something. <laughs> but, if, but if my time come to do that, I'll probably be able to do it, you know, and you too. In Philippians 2.16, it says, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain, because it's worth it. That's what Paul says. I'm holding forth the word of life. That's who I am. It's like, here he comes. He's coming around the bend. Let's avoid him. Or let's, let's mock him. Right? They mocked the Lord. They mocked it. the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the word himself. They mocked him. Even the centurion at the cross, he says, surely this was the son of God. He was mocking him too, probably, him and his men. In Ephesians 3, 18, it says, that may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that he might be filled with all the fullness of God. Lacking nothing. The fullness of God. Lacking nothing. That we might know. Which passes understanding. We don't understand. We trust him. And we believe him. We believe him. In Romans 8.38. It says. For I am persuaded. This is what God wants us to have. Persuasion. That we know. There's no doubt. No doubt in my mind. That neither death. Nor life. Nor angel nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. I don't know what's coming tomorrow. I don't know what's coming. But even that is not going to affect me. It's not going to affect the love of God, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You notice how he, all-inclusive us, it's us. He was saying, I am I'm confident in this very in Philippians that this that you know that he who began a work in you will complete it. So I'm confident that he is he's okay. He's got it going on for us. We're trusting him. We don't have to lift our eyes to anything. It's better over here. You know, oh, this is this is great. I'll go here. This is better. See, but Jesus gave it all to purchase us. Was it enough? 
we can't we don't have to add anything to it we don't have to do we don't have to be like us uh, trying to station you know secure the ark we just trust them we don't add to it he gave it all why because i don't know i don't understand it i, I do see he says his love of god we just can't it's incomprehensible can't explain it but he says we're worth it we're worth it in hebrews 12 2 in closing it says looking unto jesus we were singing i got a list of all these old songs that we were singing the other day i asked allison who's probably watching now i asked her to send me them and then they started coming up all these old hymns so we got to do these old hymns the old hymns are the ones that these people had. They actually lit these songs. You know, like, it is well with my soul. And peace like a river. You know, it's like these people today, they just pump out stuff, you know, because of the people have talent. You know, oh, they got talent and we'll lift that and we'll make money and people buy the records. But there's no there's no depth. There's nothing in the tunes. I'm sorry, people, if you're selling records. But that's that's the fact. These old ones, and there's still songs that are good that are that are written that have some depth in them, like my songs. Right? <laughs> no, but there are there are some that's st that there. But the, but the old songs, these people live these lives, and they're and they're for real. It's not like there's a a young person comes up and they're very talented, and the, and they lift them up, and they're they're novices. They're just talented. That's it. They love God. But the songs, those old songs, when we sang them, the anointing just was just flowing. But looking unto Jesus, that's one of them too. Keep, you know, uh, turn your eyes upon Jesus. The Word of God. The author and the finisher of our faith. The author for, for the joy that was set before him. So he thought it was worth it, the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. It's an amazing, isn't it? He endured that for you and for me because he said you're worth it. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you so much today for your word and, and for letting us know that we are, have great value and that you can use us to, to, to do your will on this planet, Lord, and, and to have a changed life and to go forward with you, to win souls, to uh, minister to people and, and lift up one another and, and be those counselors that you use mightily in this time. We just thank you for that, Lord. And when we pray that there's anyone that's listening today, that's never accepted Christ, accepted Him, the Word of God, the Word of God, every detail, who had to come and die on a cross to redeem us and make us white as snow, Lord, and clean and pure and righteous. If you believe that He came and, and put that kind of value on you, and you've never accepted him. And you say, Lord, I accept you today. Come into my heart. I believe you. I believe you. Thank you for forgiving my sins, all of them. And uh, if you said that with every head bowed, eye closed, just slip your hand up. No one listening, if there's one. All right. And if you're listening online, uh, just send us a note and let us know that that uh, you were listening. Because we, we, that encouraged us too. And now we pray for the closing song. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
a new creation. Old things are passed away. Everything has become new in Him. God no longer knows the things that brought you to this place before you came here. He only sees you holy now, faultless and blameless as you stand there. any man be in Christ then he has become a new creation old things are passed away behold everything has become new in him God no longer knows the things that brought you to this place before you came here. He only sees you holy now, faultless and blameless as you're standing there. Pray. Righteousness is like a robe upon you, clothing and covering, this garment of praise will now adorn you, will live and reign forever as priests and kings and sons you will call his own. Blood is flowing in you now. Royalty has finally found a home in you. Praise Him. Lift your hands and pray. Lift your 
hands and praise Him. Praise Him. Praise the name of Jesus. You, Lord. Lord, we just pray now. We pray for the for the wrap and for the food that, that is prepared for us. And uh, we just thank you, God, that that you put place such value on us, Lord. Yes. And that uh, we're just thankful, God, for that. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.